We might want to have a tiling game. Um, so that would mean that we have basically, um, you know, one 480 by 360 image that is kind of the, uh, the the main screen that we're starting out on, and then another screen beside it that is also 480 by 360, and then another one beside that, and that they all sort of come by like a train, you know, a train of train cars coming past the screen. So this is the kind of game that's called Side Scroller where the guy actually stands still, kind of like Super Mario. He stands still and that train of uh, 480 by 360 images butted right up against each other come uh, traveling past as we supposedly run. So that's the kind of, uh, that's the kind of game we're thinking about right now. And the, the question is how do we make a, a series of tiles like that that fit together? I'm gonna show you with Photoshop how you could do that if I take a, um, a big image, if I look here, it actually says this is 2048 by 1792, way bigger than our scratch uh, stage. So here it is, shrunken down 25%. And what I'd like to do is just arbitrarily, I'm gonna take like a 480 by 360 chunk here and one right next to it and one right next to that. So let's see what that looks like. And uh, the way I'll do it is with guides. This is, there's several ways to do this, but I'm gonna start out by showing you this. I'll make a guide, a vertical guide, and position it at 480 pixels. So that's the width of one scratch stage. Do that again. This time uh, 960. That would be 480 plus 480, right? And then I'll do one more at, uh, I have this written down somewhere. What's 480 times three? Sorry about that, 1440 pixels. So there it is. That's three screens worth. That's good enough for now. Then I also want the, the bottom uh, boundary. So I'll make a horizontal rule and that will be at 360 pixels. So there we go, we've got three scratch uh, stages side by side. Now I can use the slice tool. It may show up as crop tool for you. You have to hold down the mouse and get down to the slice tool and we can just click slices from guides. So what it's done here is it's actually sliced this into one, two, three, four, actually eight images. We don't need all of them and you could deselect them, but honestly, at this point, we're already done. You can just go to file, save for web. And uh, the most important things here are what format you're gonna save it as. And I'd say PNG works well for us. GIF is not really, uh, that file I started with just happened to be GIF, that's why it is using that as the default. I could choose JPEG or PNG, um, whichever. Then, and I don't need transparency, not that it matters here. And uh, the last thing is, hmm, I don't know if it, well, I guess you probably can't see it on your screen, but I think, I think really you can just hit done at this point. I don't know what happened there. Hold on, save for web. And we've chosen the slices and, ah, okay, so down at the bottom, sorry, I, I, I'm having a hard time seeing too. So down at the bottom, I've got a save. That's what I wanted, save, not done. So here it's asking where I wanna save it and I'll just make a new folder called uh, my map tiles. And images only, all slices. When I hit save, what it should do is actually it should have saved eight separate images. Let's take a look. On the desktop, my map tiles, images, here they are. That one's 480 by 360, that one's 480 by 360, and so is that one. Those are the three I'm interested in. They're called one, two, three. The others are not so interesting to me. So, in fact, I'm just gonna get rid of them. Okay, so I've got three map tiles that if I put them side by side, they would make one long uh, terrain. And that's, that's what I'm interested in. Of course, if you're trying to make a game that was like a top view, sort of like Zelda, where your character is here and kind of travels around uh, in all directions, then you could do the same thing with slices, except make slices in a, a true grid where you have 
a, uh, a map tile here, and then another one that's above it, another one that's to the side of it, another one that's diagonal, and then you could move in all directions and the background would scroll around seamlessly. So that's, that's how you'd create these images with Photoshop, and I'll show you in another video how to put them together in Scratch.